Hello boys and girls, it's me, Miss Danielle from the Grand Ledge Area District Library. Today we are going to celebrate Christmas. We're going to learn a lot of things about Christmas today and we're going to enjoy two of my favorite stories. The first one is called, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. How the Grinch Stole Christmas by Dr. Seuss, published by Random House. Every Who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot, but the Grinch who lived just north of Whoville did not. The Grinch hated Christmas the whole Christmas season. Now please don't ask why, no one quite knows the reason. It could be his head wasn't screwed on just right. It could be perhaps that his shoes were too tight. But I think that the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. But whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve hating the Who's. Start staring down from his cave with a sour grinchy frown at the warm lighted windows below in their town. For he knew every Who down in Whoville beneath was busy now hanging a mistletoe wreath. And they're hanging their stockings, he snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow is Christmas, it's practically here. Then he growled with his Grinch fingers, nervously drumming, I must find some way to stop Christmas from coming. For tomorrow he knew all the Who girls and boys would wake bright and early, they'd rush for their toys. And then, oh the noise, oh the noise, 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 noise. That's one thing he hated, the noise, 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 noise. Then the Who's, young and old, would sit down to a feast, and they'd feast, and they'd feast, and they'd feast, 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 feast. They would feast on Who pudding and rare Who roast beast, which was something the Grinch couldn't stand in the least. And then they'd do something he liked least of all. Every Who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, would stand close together with Christmas bells ringing. They'd stand hand in hand, and the Who's would start singing. They'd sing, and they'd sing, and they'd sing, 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 sing. And the most, the more the Grinch thought of this Who Christmas sing, the more the Grinch thought, I must stop this whole thing. Why, for 53 years I've put up with it now, I must stop this Christmas from coming. But how? Then he got an idea, an awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderfully awful idea. I know just what to do, the Grinch laughed in his throat and he made a quick Santa Claus hat and a coat. And he chuckled and chuckled, what a great Grinchy trick. With this coat and this hat, I look just like St. Nick. All I need is a reindeer, the Grinch looked around. But since reindeers are scarce, there was none to be found. Did that stop the old Grinch? No, the Grinch simply said, if I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he called his dog Max, then he took some red thread, and he tied a big horn on the top of his head. Then he loaded some bags and some old empty sacks on a ramshackle sleigh and he hitched up old Max. Then the Grinch said, giddy up, and the sleigh started down toward the homes where the Who's lay a snooze in their town. All their windows were dark, quiet snow filled the air. All the Who's were all dreaming sweet dreams without care. When he came to the first little house on the square, this is a stop number one, the old Grinchy Claus hissed and he climbed to the roof, empty bags in his fist. Then he slid down the chimney, a rather tight pinch, but if Santa could do it, then so could the Grinch. He got stuck only once for a moment or two, then he stuck his head out of the fireplace flue, where the little who stockings all hung in a row. These stockings, he grinned, are the first things to go. Then he slithered and slunk with a smile most unpleasant around the whole room and he took every present. Pop guns and bicycles, roller skates, drums, checkered boards, tricycles, popcorns and plums. And he stuffed them in bags. Then the Grinch very nimbly stuffed all the bags one by one up the chimney. Then he slunk to the ice, bo ice box. He took the Who's feast. He took the Who pudding. He took the roast beast. He cleaned out their ice boxes as quick as a flash. Why, that Grinch even took their last can of Who hash. Then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. And now, grinned the Grinch, I will stuff up the tree. 
And the Grinch grabbed the tree and he started to shove when he heard a small sound like a coo of a dove. He turned around fast and he saw a small who, little Cindy Lou who, who was not more than two. The Grinch had been caught by this tiny who daughter who'd got out of bed for a cold cup of water. She stared at the Grinch and said, Santa Claus, why? Why are you taking our Christmas tree? Why? But you know that old Grinch was so smart and so slick, he thought up a lie and he thought it up quick. Why, my sweet little tot, the fake Santa Claus lied, there's a light on the tree that won't light on the side. So I'm taking it home to my workshop, my dear, and I'll fix it there and I'll bring it back here. And his fib fooled the child. Then he patted her head and he got her a drink and he sent her to bed. And when Cindy Lou Who went to bed with her cup, he went to the chimney and stuffed the tree up. Then the last thing he took was the log for the fire. Then he went up the chimney himself, the old liar. On their walls he left nothing but hooks and some wire. And the one speck of food that he left in the house was a crumb that was even too small for a mouse. Then he did the same thing to the other who's houses, leaving crumbs much too small for the other who's mouses. It was quarter past dawn, all the who's still a bed, all the who's still a snooze when he packed up his sled, packed it up with their presents, their ribbons, their wrappings, their tags and the tinsel, the trimmings, the trappings. 3,000 feet up, up the side of Mount Crumpet, he rode with his load to the tip top to dump it. Poo poo to the who's, he, he was grinchously humming. They're finding out now that no Christmas is coming. They're just waking up, I know just what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open a minute or two. Then the who's down in Whoville will all cry, boo hoo. That's a noise, grinned the Grinch, that I simply must hear. So he paused and the Grinch put his hand to his ear. And he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started in low and then it started to grow. But the sound wasn't sad. Why, this sound sounded merry. It couldn't be so, but it was merry, very. He stared down at Whoville. The Grinch popped his eyes. Then he shook. What he saw was a shocking surprise. Every Who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, was singing without any presence at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came. Somehow or other, it came just the same. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. And he puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville they say that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And the minute his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he whistled with his load through the bright morning light and he brought back the toys and the food for the feast. And he, he himself, the Grinch, Carved the Roast Beast. The end. Do you know Jingle Bells? Try to sing along. Dashing through the snow in a one horse open sleigh, over the fields we go, laughing all the way. Ha ha ha, bells on bobtails ring, making spirits bright. What fun it is to ride and sing a sleighing song tonight. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Hey! Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Merry Christmas. If You Take a Mouse to the Movies by Laura Numeroff, illustrated by Felicia Bond, published by HarperCollins Publishers. If you take a mouse to the movies, He'll ask you for some popcorn, and when you give him the popcorn, he'll want to string it all together. 
Then he'll want to hang it on a Christmas tree. You'll have to buy him one. On the way home, he'll see a snowman in your neighbor's yard and he'll want to make one of his own. Then he'll need a carrot for a nose. When he's all finished, he'll decide to build a fort. He'll ask you to help him. Then he'll want to make some snowballs and have a snowball fight. Playing outside will make him cold. He'll want to go inside and curl up on the couch. He'll ask you for a blanket. Once he's nice and cozy, he'll want to listen to Christmas carols. You'll have to find some on the radio. He'll probably sing along. The carols will remind him of his Christmas tree, so he'll want to make ornaments. You'll get some paper and glue. He'll ask you for glitter. When the ornaments are done, He'll hang them all up. Then he'll stand back and to look at the tree. He'll notice his popcorn string is missing. So he'll want to make another one. He'll ask you for some popcorn and chances are when you give him the popcorn, he'll want you to take him to the movies. The end.